And I neglected to say that I was adding the definition for act. Okay. So I made those two changes. Is everybody ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. September 6, 2018, in Dallas County, Texas. To this charge, the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty. A person commits the offense of murder if the person, one, intentionally or knowingly causes the death of an individual, or two, intends to cause serious bodily injury and commits an act clearly dangerous to human life that causes the death of an individual. A person acts intentionally or with intent with respect to a result of her conduct when it is her conscious objective or desire to cause the result. A person acts knowingly or with knowledge with respect to a result of her conduct when she is aware that her conduct is reasonably certain to cause the result. Individual means a human being who is alive, including an unborn child at every stage of gestation from fertilization until birth. Person means an individual, corporation, or association. Act means a bodily movement, whether voluntary or involuntary, and includes speech. Bodily injury means physical pain, illness, or any impairment of physical condition. Serious bodily injury means bodily injury that creates a substantial risk of death or that causes death serious permanent disfigurement or protracted loss or impairment of the function of any bodily <coughs> member or organ. Deadly weapon means A, a firearm or anything manifestly designed, made, or adapted for the purpose of inflicting death or serious bodily injury, or B, anything that in the manner of its use or intended use is capable of causing death or serious bodily injury. Now, considering all the law contained in the court's charge, if you unanimously find and believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about September 6, 2018, in Dallas County, Texas, the defendant, Amber Geiger, did intentionally <coughs> or knowingly cause the death of both of John, an individual here and after called deceased, by shooting the deceased with a firearm, a deadly weapon, or if you unanimously find and believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about September 6, 2018, in Dallas County, Texas, the defendant, Amber Geiger, did intend to cause serious bodily injury to both of John, 
an individual hereafter called deceased and did commit an act clearly dangerous to human life by shooting the deceased with a firearm, a deadly weapon, thereby causing the death of Bokum John, then you will find the defendant guilty of murder as alleged in the indictment. If you do not so believe, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, or if you are unable to agree, you will next consider whether the defendant is guilty of the included offense of manslaughter. Our law provides that a person commits the offense of manslaughter if she recklessly causes the death of an individual. A person acts recklessly or is reckless with respect to the result of her conduct when she is aware of but consciously disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the result will occur. The risk must be of such a nature and degree that its disregard constitutes a gross deviation from the standard of care that an ordinary prudent, I'm sorry, that an ordinary person would exercise under all the circumstances as viewed from the actor's standpoint. Now, therefore, considering all the law contained in the court's charge, if you unanimously find and believe from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about September 2018 in Dallas County, Texas, the defendant, Amber Geiger, did recklessly cause the death of both of John, an individual here and after called deceased, by shooting the deceased with a firearm, a deadly weapon, then you will find the defendant guilty of manslaughter, as included in the indictment. If you should find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is either guilty of murder or manslaughter, but you have a reasonable doubt as to which offense she is guilty of, then you should resolve that doubt in the defendant's favor and find the defendant guilty of the included offense of manslaughter. If you have a reasonable doubt as to whether the defendant is guilty of any offense defined in this charge, you will acquit the defendant and say by your verdict, not guilty. It is a defense to prosecution that the conduct in question is justified under our law. You are to consider the statutory defense of self-defense in determining if the defendant is guilty of the offenses alleged or included in the indictment. Under our law, a person is justified in using force against another in self-defense when and to the degree she reasonably believes the force is immediately necessary to protect herself against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful force. The use of force against another is not justified in response to verbal provocation alone. A person is justified in using deadly force against another if she would be justified in using force against the other as set out above and when she reasonably believes that such deadly force is immediately necessary to protect herself <coughs> against the other person's use or attempted use of unlawful deadly force or to prevent the other's imminent commission of aggravated kidnapping, murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, robbery, or aggravated robbery. The term reasonable belief as used herein means a belief that will be held by an ordinary and prudent person in the same circumstances as the defendant. The term deadly force as used herein means force that is intended or known by the person using it to cause or in the manner of its use or intended use is capable of causing death or serious bodily injury. Habitation means a structure that is adapted for the overnight accommodation of persons and includes A, each separately secured or occupied portion of the structure, and B, each structure pertinent to or connected with the structure. The defendant's belief that deadly force was immediately necessary is presumed to be reasonable if the defendant, <coughs> one, knew or had reason to believe that the person against whom deadly force was used unlawfully and with force entered the actor's occupied habitation, or knew or had reason to believe that the person against whom deadly force was used was attempting to remove unlawfully and with force the actor from the actor's habitation, or knew or had reason to believe that the person against whom deadly force was used was committing or attempting to commit aggravated kidnapping, murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, robbery, or aggravated murder. And the person did not, I'm sorry, 
the defendant did not provoke the person against whom the deadly force was used, and the defendant was not otherwise engaged in criminal activity other than a Class C misdemeanor that is a violation of a law or ordinance regulating traffic at the time the deadly force was used. This presumption applies unless the state proves beyond a reasonable doubt that the facts giving rise to the presumption as listed above do not exist. If the state fails to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the facts giving rise to the presumption do not exist, you must find that the presumption exists. Even though you may find that the presumption does not exist, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt each of the elements of the offense charged. A person who has a right to be present at the location where the deadly force is used, who has not provoked the person against whom the deadly force is used, and who is not engaged in criminal activity at the time the deadly force is used, is not required to retreat before using deadly force to defend herself. If you find from the evidence that the defendant was such a person, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you may not consider whether the, the defendant failed to retreat in determining whether the defendant reasonably believed that the use of deadly force was necessary. <coughs> when a person is attacked with unlawful deadly force, or if she reasonably believes she is under attack or attempted attack with unlawful deadly force by one or more persons, and there is created in the mind of such person a reasonable expectation or fear of death or serious bodily injury to herself at the hands of such attacker or attackers, then the law excuses or justifies such person in resorting to deadly force by any means at her command to the, to the degree that she reasonably believes immediately necessary, viewed from her standpoint at the time, to protect herself from such attack or attempted attack. In making your determination, you should, you should consider all the facts and circumstances and evidence before you, all relevant facts and circumstances surrounding the use of force or deadly force, the previous relationship existing between the defendant and the injured party, together with all relevant facts and circumstances going to show the condition of the mind of the defendant at the time of the alleged offense. In considering such circumstances, you should place yourselves in the defendant's position at the time and view them from her standpoint alone. Now, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the 6th day of September 2018 in Dallas County, Texas, the defendant, Amber Geiger, did intentionally or knowingly cause the death of Botham John, here and after called deceased, by shooting the deceased with a firearm, or did intend to cause serious bodily injury to Botham John, and did commit an act clearly dangerous to human life by shooting the deceased with a firearm, a deadly weapon, thereby causing the death of Bolton and John, or did recklessly cause the death of Bolton and John by shooting Bolton and John with a firearm, but you further find from the evidence, or you have a reasonable doubt thereof, that at the time of the alleged offense, the defendant reasonably believed that she was under attack or attempted attack with unlawful deadly force from Bolton and John, and that the defendant reasonably believed, as viewed from her standpoint, that such deadly force as she used was immediately necessary to protect herself against such attack or attempted attack, or to prevent the imminent commission of aggravated kidnapping, murder, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, robbery, or aggravated robbery by Bolton John. And so believing she shot Bolton John with a firearm, a deadly weapon, then you shall acquit the defendant and say by your verdict, not guilty. A person's conduct that would otherwise constitute the crime of murder or manslaughter is not a criminal offense if the person <coughs> through mistake formed a reasonable belief about a matter of fact and the mistaken belief negated the kind of culpability required for the commission of the offense. The defendant is not required to prove that she made a mistake of fact. Rather, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant did not make a mistake of fact constituting a defense. Reasonable belief means a belief that an ordinary and prudent person would have held in the same circumstances as the defendant. If you have found that the state has proved the offense beyond a reasonable doubt, you must next decide whether the state has proved the defendant did not make a mistake of fact constituting a defense. 
to decide the issue of mistake of fact, you must, you must determine whether the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt one of the following. One, the defendant did not believe that she was entering her own apartment or did not believe that the deceased was an intruder in her apartment, or two, the defendant's belief that she was entering her own apartment or her belief that the deceased was an intruder in her apartment was not reasonable. You must all agree that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt either one or two listed above. You need not agree on which of these elements the state has proved. If you find that the state has failed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt either element one or element two listed above, you must find the defendant not guilty. If you, are, if you unanimously agree that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt each of the elements of murder or manslaughter, and you unanimously agree, agree that the state has proved beyond a reasonable doubt either element one, that the defendant did not believe that she was entering her own apartment, or did not believe that the deceased was an intruder in her apartment, or element two, that the defendant's belief that she was entering her own apartment, or that her belief that the deceased was an intruder in her apartment was not reasonable, then you shall find the defendant guilty as alleged or included in the indictment. You are instructed that when reading the instructions contained in this charge, you are to consider the charge as a whole. A grand jury indictment is the means whereby a defendant is brought to trial in a felony prosecution. It is not evidence of guilt, nor can it be considered by you in passing upon the issue of guilt of the defendant. All persons are presumed to be innocent, and no person may be convicted of an offense unless each element of the offense is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The fact that a person has been arrested, confined, or indicted for, or otherwise charged with an offense gives rise to no inference of guilt at her trial. The law does not require a defendant to prove her innocence or produce any evidence at all. The presumption of innocence alone is sufficient to acquit the defendant unless the jurors are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt of the defendant's guilt after careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence in the case. The prosecution has the burden of proving the defendant guilty, and it must do so by proving each and every element of the offense charged beyond a reasonable doubt. This burden rests upon the state throughout the trial and never shifts to the defendant. If the state fails to meet its burden, you must acquit the defendant. It is not required that the prosecution prove guilt beyond all possible doubt. It is required that the prosecution's proof excludes all reasonable doubt concerning the defendant's guilt. You are instructed that if there is any testimony before you in this case regarding the defendant having committed offenses or acts other than the offense alleged against her in the indictment in this case, you cannot consider such testimony for any purpose unless you find and believe beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed such other offenses or acts if any were committed. And even then, you may only consider the same in determining the defendant's motive, opportunity, intent, plan, identity, knowledge, or absence of mistake, accident, or state of mind, if any, and not for any other purpose. In the event you have a reasonable doubt as to the defendant's guilt after considering all the evidence before you and these instructions, you will acquit the defendant and say by your verdict, not guilty. You are charged that it is only from the witness stand that the jury is permitted to receive evidence regarding the case, and no juror is permitted to communicate to any other juror anything he may have heard regarding the case from any source other than the witness stand. You are instructed that any statements of counsel made during the course of the trial or during argument not supported by the evidence or statements of law made by counsel not in harmony with the law as stated to you by the court in these instructions are to be wholly disregarded. Mere sentiment, conjecture, sympathy, passion, prejudice, public opinion, or public feeling is to play no part in your deliberations. You are the exclusive judges of the facts proved, of the credibility of the witnesses, and of the weight to be given in their testimony. 
but you are bound to receive the law from the court which is given to you in this charge. After argument of counsel, you will retire to consider your verdict in this case. You should begin by selecting one of your members as presiding juror. It is the duty of the presiding juror to preside at your deliberations, to vote equally as any other juror in arriving at a verdict, and to sign the verdict on behalf of the jury. After you retire to consider your verdict, no one has any authority to communicate with you except the officer who has you in charge. During your deliberations in this case, you must neither consider, discuss, nor relate any matters not in evidence before you. You should neither consider nor mention any personal knowledge or information you may have about any fact or person connected with this case, which is not shown by the evidence. After you have retired, you may communicate with this court in writing through the bailiff who has you in charge. Your written communication must be signed by the presiding juror. No one has any authority to communicate with you except the bailiff who has you in his or her charge. Do not attempt to talk to the bailiff, the attorneys, or the court regarding any question you may have concerning the trial of this case. After you have reached a unanimous verdict, or if you desire to communicate, communicate with the court, please use the jury call button on the wall and one of the bailiffs will respond. Signed, Judge Tammy Kemp, 204th Judicial District Court, Dallas County, Texas. And the last two pages consist of the verdict forms and you will select only one of them. The first reads, we the jury unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of murder as charged in the indictment. And then there's a signature line for the presiding juror to sign his or her name. And then there's a line for that person to print their name. Or, we the jury unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, guilty of manslaughter as included in the indictment. The same two lines for the presiding juror to put their name. And lastly, we the jury unanimously find the defendant, Amber Geiger, not guilty. And the same two signatory lines. 